Dr. Alan Mendelson from Eye Surgeons and Consultants in Hollywood, Florida. Today I'm going to talk about thyroid eye disease. What happens is those who have thyroid disease, whether it's hyperthyroidism, hypothyroidism, the eye is involved approximately 50% of the time. Now, of those that are involved, almost 100% of patients will suffer from dry eyes. Why? So thyroid disease, especially the hyperthyroidism, it's an autoimmune process. The very same autoimmune process that can affect the thyroid glands affects many structures with the eye. So here we have a schematic of the eye. This is a left eye. In the upper outer quadrant, we have a gland called the lacrimal gland. So in the upper outer quadrant, we all have the lacrimal gland. The lacrimal glands will make windshield wiper fluid 24 hours a day. It lubricates the eye, keeps the eye healthy. Unfortunately, in the process with the thyroid disease, that same autoimmune process, the thyroid gland becomes attacked and the amount of aqueous produced, or basically the amount of windshield wiper fluid, is decreased. Right there alone is a major reason why those with thyroid have dry eyes. And again, about 100% of people who have thyroid disease have dry eyes. So the lacrimal gland is attacked, so less aqueous is produced. There's a second problem. With thyroid, especially hyperthyroidism, the eye will tend to bulge forward a little bit. When it bulges forward a little bit, we call that, there's a medical word called proptosis. It leaves the eye a little bit more exposed. With the eye bulging forward, when it's a little bit more exposed, what happens is the cornea will dry out much more readily. That itself creates more dry eye. So we now have strike one, the lacrimal gland makes less fluid. Strike two, the eye frequently is bulging out a little. But there's a third reason. Here we have on this schematic, you see the upper eyelid covers over on top of the cornea to a certain extent. The lower eyelid covers over to a lesser extent. But when the, it, with thyroid disease, the upper eyelid's lifted up, lower eyelid down. I'm going to demonstrate on myself. So if you look, my left upper lid covers over the eye a little bit. But with thyroid, what happens is you can see the white tarp top above my eye. In thyroid, you have it both above and below, and you have that exposure. So now it's three reasons. Lacrimal gland takes a hit. The eye is protruding a little. You have the eyelid retraction. And with all of those things, people with thyroid get very, very dry eyes. Eyes are dry. They hurt. They're sensitive to light, frequently a feeling like a foreign body sensation. So lubrication is absolutely paramount importance. But even frequent lubricating drops every two hours frequently won't do the trick. Now, the fluid will drain out little openings called puncta. They're tiny little openings. I'm going to magnify this a little bit more if it will. No, nope, that's a little bit too magnified. Uh, let me go a little bit smaller. These are the little openings called puncta. Fluid drains out. So there is something called punctal plugs, where we can put little plugs into those spaces. And what the punctal plugs will do is, whatever fluid's in the eye, it will tend to keep it there or maintain it, so it will stay longer. So it's not that often that one needs to use punctal plugs. But with thyroid eye disease, we use it much, much more commonly, and it does the trick beautifully. Now, in our practice, Dr. Nathan Klein is an expert with punctal plugs, and uh, our patients with thyroid eye disease, it, it works absolutely superbly. Switched from the diagram to a model eye. So as we discussed, 100% of patients, they develop dry eye for the reasons we talked about. Of those with thyroid eye disease, approximately 90% have eyelid retraction. Again, the upper lid goes up, the lower lid goes down, so you can see the white scleral wall 
that's normally covered by the eyelids. Additionally, the eye bulging forward or proptosis, about 60% of patients with thyroid disease. But there are other things. So pretend this is a real eye. When the eye looks from one side to the other, looks up and down, of course, that should be a painless procedure. That looking around is what we do normally all day long. But those with thyroid disease, because of the autoimmune process, the muscles called the extraocular muscles can become involved. And just that movement, patients will say the eye feels full or they have a little bit of discomfort with moving the eye. That what we, is something we call pain on motion. There are very few things that cause pain on motion, cellulitis, thyroid eye disease, but it's always a worry. Looking side to side should not elicit pain. If it gets worse and worse, there can be considerable pain or even the eye will stop moving totally the way that it should. And that can lead to double vision. So about 10 to 20% of patients with thyroid eye disease will come in complaining of double vision. So again, dry eyes by far most common, the lid retraction second most, the eye protruding probably third most, and then there are other things as well with the pain on motion or double vision. So how do we take care of this? It's really an important tag team approach. We rely on the endocrinologists to have the thyroid functions under good control, and that is very much of paramount importance. Then as the ophthalmologist, we want to make sure the corneas are well lubricated, the eyes are healthy. Now, the good news is most commonly, one, two, tops three years, this inflammatory process will kind of on its own burn, burn out and things are under good control. The difficulty though arises in smokers. I keep coming back to smoking is causing major harm and damage to the eye. Those who have thyroid who smoke are far more likely to have all these complications that we talked about and it's much more prolonged. So it's higher percent and it's more severe. So again, please don't smoke, especially if you have thyroid disease. Smoking makes much more likely to have ocular complications. Now, for whatever reason, women are far more likely to get this, five to six times more likely. And not always, but usually it's people between the ages of 30 to 60 who are afflicted with the thyroid eye disease. But it's really a tag team approach with physicians working together. Tragically, about one, two percent of people can have a permanent loss of vision. Sometimes it's caused by scarring of the cornea but sometimes the inflammatory process can involve the nerve in the back of the eye called the optic nerve, causing permanent damage to the nerve, which results in a permanent loss of vision. Frequently, there'll be large blind spots. So anyone who has hypothyroidism, hyperthyroidism, or any issues with the thyroid at all, definitely should be followed closely by their eye physician, minimum twice a year, but whenever there's involvement, it should be more frequent as needed. Thank you very much.